a sky dancing male hen harrier is something that everyone should see and everyone should have the chance to experience. And sadly, because of driven grouse shooting, we are banned, we're not allowed, we're, we're deprived of that wonderful experience. So let's send a message to these people to stop killing our hen harriers, get them back on our moors so we can all enjoy the wonderful hen harrier as we should. So I think we're ready now, hopefully some more people can hear us, and I'm going to introduce our next speaker, Hydral Dunza, who is our Wildlife and Crime Commissioner for Derbyshire, elected in May 2016, and I hope that he's going to tell us what wonderful work the uh, police enforcement agency is going to do to protect our hen harriers. So thank you very much for doing Okay, I've done some stage speaking, and this is going to, this is going to take, a, take, the, take the cake for that one. But can, I, can everybody hear me at the back? Darren? Darren, can you hear me? Darren, can you hear me? Darren? Wait. Yes, good. Right, my name's Hardy Odinsa. I'm not just the uh, Police and Crime Commissioner for Wildlife, I'm uh, the Police and Crime Commissioner for Policing and Crime in the whole of Derbyshire. One of the things I've said that I will be, even though I'm a councillor and from an urbanite and from Derby City, I want to make sure that I am the Police and Crime Commissioner for every corner of Derbyshire, urban, suburban and rural. And today, that latter bit about rurality and the environment and Derbyshire has a destination for people to come and view and experience nature as it should be, or as close as it can be, is something that we need to preserve and we need to promote and we need to do that because, not only because it's good, because wildlife and nature should be preserved and allowed to flourish, as naturally as possible, but it's also about, it helps the economy of the Peak District and the County of Derbyshire. Millions of people come to visit, to view nature in all its diversity, and within that, the Hen Harrier has got an important part to play, and I want to do whatever I can to make sure that happens. Now, my predecessor, Alan Charles, was a supporter of wildlife crime and had spoken in support of the hen harrier and the raptor group uh, preservation. I was his deputy for three and a half years and I was not always waiting for the train to go by, but I was full square with him in supporting his priority for wildlife crime and actually the work that you're doing for hen harriers and for the raptor groups. And I have given a pledge, and I did that when I was fighting for the election to be the second police and crime commissioner in Derbyshire. I gave a pledge that I would continue to have wildlife crime as one of my priorities in my term of office, which ends in 2020. So, and it says, and you can quote me, and you can call me back if I'm not pursuing that our aim, I will continue to develop our approach to cracking down on heritage, rural, and wildlife crime. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to continue to do. That will be in the draft police and crime plan, which will be published in about a couple of months' time and on my 100 years of being in office. So mid, at the end of August, beginning of September, the new draft, draft police and crime plan will be published and within that, that pledge will be in it and very important to me. And that's why I'm here today, to support any event which is actually promoting, protecting wildlife in Derbyshire and also making sure that more and more people are able to enjoy it 365 days of the year. Now, what do the police do in, in this area? One of the things I'm proud of is that in the first term, as a Deputy Police and Crime Commissioner with Alan Charles, the Chief Constable of Derbyshire, Mick Creedon, identified that 
wildlife crime, even though it's still high volume and it's not the top priority in terms of risk and threat, he would give a commitment to have a more structured, organized way of delivering um, or uh, tackling wildlife crime. And that led to a structure which now exists in the police uh, uh, in constabulary of Derbyshire of a gold, silver, bronze uh, operational uh, strategic approach to tackling wildlife crime. So the, there is a uh, wildlife crime assistant chief constable who's focusing on it. We've got Superintendent Patrick McLaughlin, Graham McLaughlin is here at the back. And he is there, the silver command, and he makes sure that the bronze organizers, which are 32 police officers, have been trained on wildlife crime in Derbyshire, so that they can actually lead, lead the fight to protect and protect and uh, tackle wildlife in Derbyshire. That means it gives credibility and importance to the whole of the workforce of Derbyshire to deliver on wildlife crime. And I think that's a real achievement, and even though it's not the highest priority in terms of risk and threat, it has been recognised by the Chief Constable that it is an important part of Derbyshire policing and uh, protecting people and communities and wildlife. Now, the constabulary get about 280 calls on average per month around wildlife related issues. I'd like that to increase, and we, we cannot do it without the contribution and the eyes and ears that you can provide and many other organizations who are precious and passionate and committed to wildlife in Derbyshire and to fight crimes against wildlife. So I want to make sure that you continue to do your part in making reports to the police about wildlife crime issues and incidences. Now, regarding the hen harrier, there was concern that when reports like this are made available to the police and the constabulary, not enough is done. I can give you a commitment that like any other crime, if the evidence is made available and the investigation finds full evidence which can be actually taken to court, the constabulary of Derbyshire will prosecute. Now there was a case where a person with a firearm dressed in camouflage clothing was seen using decoy in suspicious circumstances. This image was taken by a member of the public and has since been leaked and seen on online by many people. I know and I've had uh, exchanges on Facebook and Twitter on this whilst I was campaigning to be the Police and Crime Commissioner subsequently. Now, the police investigation was undertaken, but the information and the, the quality of the, uh, the filming was not good enough to actually take it to prosecution through the CPS, the Crown Prosecution Service. That should not deter or demoralize or put off anybody to continue to report any incident and capture more effective and more useful evidence which can help the police to do their job, which is to fight crime and prosecute where wrongdoing is being done. Now, this is a case about wildlife and about how planning and conservation come, in, come hand in hand. We in Derbyshire have had one of the best examples of a prosecution, and it wasn't about raptors, but it was about bat persecution, where a planner and a developer ignored planning regulations and destroyed the bat path and uh, 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 nesting areas for a bat in, uh, in Derbyshire. He was taken to talk, court by Derbyshire Constabulary, successfully prosecuted. He appealed, his ap appeal was overruled, and that case was an example of how, and it's a landmark example, where that person was actually then taken to court for Proceeds of Crime Act, and money was taken off him. And he was charged, and that money was made available and taken off him as a result of the conviction. That is a landmark 
case across the country, the National Crime Agency has uh, applauded their Dabija Kasabi for what they've done. And I want to use that as a good example of how we can actually continue to fight wildlife crime by using examples like that and using the Proceeds of Crimes Act, um, taking money off people or other resources when and wherever we can. Now, I'm committed 100% to make sure that with the Peak District Bird of Prey Initiative, I will do my part. I know the constabulary will do their part, and they're here in attendance today in support, not to police, but in support of what's happening here today. We will do our best to contribute to as many initiatives and organizations which preserve, promote, and celebrate wildlife in Derbyshire now and in the future. Now, raptor persecution is only one area. Badger persecution, bat persecution, poaching, the uh, Convention on International Trade and of Endangered Species and Wildlife and Flora sites, freshwater pearl mussels, Every aspect of wildlife crime and protecting nature will be pursued resolutely and with support and in partnership to make sure that we can have an effective campaign to promote wildlife. Because not only is it good for our nature and habitat area of Derbyshire, it's also good for our economy. And I will support any initiative which helps us to uh, achieve those aims. So I'm very privileged very pleased and very, uh, uh, you know, uh, very, uh, really uh, amazed in terms of the uh, the number of people who are actually interested in this. How and how, through social media and through other campaigns, people are joined together in partnership and in collaboration to work together to protect wildlife in Derbyshire. I will continue to do that, and I'm very pleased to be here to speaking to you and in support of that. Thank you very much.